<laughs> yes, it is fun. It is absolutely fun. And This video is sponsored by Electron Portable EV Chargers. Electron supplied us with this 240 volt, 32 amp portable charger for us to use and it drastically cut down our home charging times. This particular charger has a 21 foot heavy duty cord, NEMA 1450 plug for our house, J1772 for any mainstream EV on the market today. If you are interested in getting a portable charger for your EV and helping out the channel in the process, click the link down in the description below. Hey gearheads and welcome to Garage Talk. I'm Corey and this funky little thing here in front of me is BMW's first entry into the electrified realm. This is the BMW i3 and in this video I'm going to give you a quick tour of this quirky little car and show you some very interesting and unique features I have not seen in anything else. <laughs> first things first, this has got the tiniest little hood on it and it is almost comical just the size and proportions of it. I mentioned in the intro this was BMW's first entry into the electrified realm. You could get this in a full electric version but this particular 2015 model is a series hybrid. And what that means is it does have a two cylinder gas engine that is not connected really to the wheels in any way, shape or form. It helps put power back in the batteries. So you can plug this vehicle up and charge it, but you can also fill it up with gas and drive it. So this really was a very efficient, very weird, very quirky vehicle for the era. Think Chevy Volt, that's with a V. The electric powertrain is really what makes this thing so interesting and unique. And that battery's back in the back, uh, but the, the design on this is just so funky, right? And speaking of funky design, nothing is more quirky uh, or funky than the passenger compartment on this, I do believe. This is actually a five door hatchback with seating for four that has this very interesting rear, uh, rear hinged rear door, much like the Mazda MX-30 that we have a review of coming out very soon. Be sure and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss that video when it drops. Uh, we've got basically an extended cab pickup truck worth of doors back here, but the windows on them are actually huge. You can see that this drop down, they're actually bigger than the front windows, which we'll talk more about when we actually drive this thing. Another feature I wanna call attention to are these wheels. 15570R19s. I, I had to look because I've never seen numbers like that. 15570R19. I've heard them described as pizza cutters and that's really exactly what they look like. They are so narrow to save on drag with the wheels on the ground, the tires on the ground that this thing really just scoots down the road and also adds a little bit to its driving fun. Back here in the back, you do get a full window dividing the roof from the body panel, again, helping that visibility. Moving back here to the back, you get a manually operated rear hatch. And again, a very good cargo size compartment for the size of vehicle because underneath this panel right here is the battery pack that really powers this vehicle all told. You can see it is deep enough for my backpack in either configuration. It's not gonna win any awards for overall trunk space by any means, but it is decent for this size class and really makes uh, efficient use of packaging space. Moving to the interior, this is, again, a very fun and quirky car to say the least. Nothing is quite how you would expect it in here. So you've got this floating screen here for your infotainment that really is just kind of floating out here on this panel. You get another floating gauge pod. Here's your gear selector, radio and HVAC controls are right here. Big open area, you've got dual cup holders. They're a uh, little joystick for controlling your trackpad up there. 
little foldable armrest here and some more cubby storage down there. Little elastic strap for you to put a purse or maybe a giant water bottle that doesn't fit in these cup holders. Very interesting and unique and even the grab holds to pull these doors shut. Very interesting placement for those. Some speakers here and then the most interesting textures I think I've ever seen in a vehicle. So you've got kind of this rhino skin looking molded plastic here. What looks like, I don't know, recycled material up here on the dash, which is actually quite huge, comically so, because uh, like if you lose something up there, you're gonna have to unbuckle to even get it. It, it, it is massive. Perhaps the biggest waste of space in this vehicle is the dash area, but all, all told, it's very interesting. Your glove box is up here. And again, talking about interesting materials, the, <laughs> the owner's manual comes in this, it's gotta be recycled wool. I, I don't know, very interesting owner's manual to say the least. It is a deep kind of well of a glove box that goes down and in. Very interesting. And then your seats are manually controllable for, you know, saving on that precious electricity that will actually get this thing down the road. Moving to the back seat, I've got this front seat where I would sit at 5'10 and sitting behind myself, uh, I've got enough room. It, it's comfortable. Very lightweight seats here covered in black plastic here on the back. Interesting way to flip and fold it forward on the back of the headrest and that is on each side. This really is a two-person rear seat because you've got cup holders here in the middle. You wouldn't want to sit on those. Removable uh, or flappy plastic covers for the rear lower anchors for a child seat and generally a comfortable rear seat. It, it, it is not a penalty box. Um, it's definitely firmer than the front seats, but it is not terrible. And you get this huge window here on the side and easy access once the front passenger opens their door. All right, getting in the BMW i3 seatbelts, really easy to find and get a hold of. Start stop button is right there. And then gear select, drive, you're off to the races. Now, <laughs> this is definitely a unique little vehicle for sure. It has a very compact footprint all told and I'm very curious. Drive, pedal down. Okay, <laughs> it builds <laughs> as it gets faster and faster and you can really hear those electric uh, that electric motor really wind up and set you off it, it feels kind of starshipy kind of futuristic especially considering this model is a 2015 year model so definitely ahead of its time compared to some of the other vehicles that were being produced i did mention the chevy volt which was very similar in powertrain architecture from this and made for a very interesting and unique way of explaining exactly what it was that powered your vehicle if you bought one of these. And I'm quite sure if you ever meet somebody who drives a BMW i3, they will be more than happy to tell you everything about it from uh, what powertrain they got, how it works, and just all the ways they are saving the planet on the inside. But getting this out on the road, <laughs> uh, a shoe box should not move like this. It, it, it is really fun and funky to say the least. You've got those really narrow tires that are doing their best to keep putting power down. And uh, for the most part, they do really well, but I'm sure if you got this out on a twisty road, it would be fairly easy to break them loose because there's hardly any rubber on the road. Uh, <laughs> this thing is fun and quirky and will absolutely turn heads just from my short drive of this around Tyler. 
a lot of people are looking like, what, what is that on the road? And that's because really BMW designers put function above form on this. The visibility out of this is so spectacular. I told you about those rear doors and their large windows. I can see out fantabulously out of this vehicle, plus the glass window that separates the roof from the hatch back behind those doors just makes for even better visibility out of this car. That's really the story of the design of this. It really was meant to be driven, driven well, and driven in city urban environments because that's really where this thing is best suited and sold the best. And my goodness, what a turning diameter on this. <laughs> Again, going back to its very small footprint, this thing is highly maneuverable and can fit in the tiniest of European parking spots. But uh, this car has me thinking, why is this the first we are seeing from BMW in electrification? Which brings me to this. This is the 2015 BMW i8, and this is really more of a traditional hybrid than that i3 was. And you know what? I'll just show you. So I think it's clear to see just from looking at the profile of this thing, it looks a little less Urkel BMW Isetta and more full on supercar. And you'd probably be right in that assessment with a few exceptions because again, this is an electrified hybrid sports car. And while the engine is back here, not up there because it's too wedge shaped, it is a turbocharged three cylinder three cylinders in a car that looks like this. And then it is backed up by the electric motors to really make this a fun and an enjoyable driving experience. But outside of all that, let's take a quick look at the design of this thing before we hit the road with it. All right, why you do get BMW's kidney grill here, uh, it isn't exactly functional as most BMW kidney grills are. There is a slot here for air to get through, uh, but the real story of the de design of this is for aerodynamic function where that i3 was really more of usability function. So you get a massive heat extractor here. There is a fan cooling the radiator down there so you can really keep this thing cool. The swooping lines of this are very dramatic as are the very interesting and unique doors on this. We will get more to those here in just a minute. And then the floating buttress back here that not only is open all the way across, but you can see it is actually floating over the rear window as well. And then you get back here to the very back and there's a usable cargo space back here, just big enough for my backpack. So it works, right? I'm not gonna lie. There is no graceful way to get in this car. And believe me, I've tried. I'm 35, I'm rather nimble and flexible. I don't do yoga or anything, but I could definitely see where yoga would come in handy when climbing in to this thing because, uh, you, I mean, the, the door is right here. I don't, I don't know what I'm supposed to do other than butt first and then you just kind of swing around and uh, it's really easy to close after that. And then you're in, right? So it's, it's not bad. Then the problem becomes um, getting back out. That's just as odd and you have, to, you have to mentally prepare yourself because there's just no easy way to do it. What's even more odd than getting in the front seats is probably the back seats. Honestly, I have not tried this at all yet, but I mentioned how easy the i8 seats were to fold forward. Same feature here, same plastic back of the seat here, but the rear seats, I don't know if you can tell, seats, that's a generous term, because it really is just a piece of leather on the 
rear carpet. And same for the backrest. Let's see if I can get in. Ow, without completely, ow, embarrassing myself. Okay, okay, going in, going in, and I'm in. This was not made for me. I am five foot 10 and I have zero headroom back here whatsoever. My feet are wedged up under the seats. Surprisingly for just being a pad of leather, the seat itself is not terrible, but the seating posture leaves a little to be desired. Now, how do I get out? Maybe it's easier than the front because I actually have a little bit of runway ahead of me. Don't have to hit my head. Oh, huh. I do think that was easier than getting out of the front seat. Okay, I'm back in. <laughs> Let's stay in this time. Firing it up, push button start. Very futuristic sounding when it starts up. Um, speaking of futuristic, get blue seat belts because blue is the color of the future for sure. And lots of blue accents all throughout this thing, but my goodness, I, <sighs> I wasn't built for this car in the Texas heat. That's a tough combination. You heard when I put it in drive is when the three cylinder turbocharged, it's a 1.5 a liter three cylinder. That's when that actually fired up. So this truly is a hybrid in every sense of the word, which means should be boring to drive, right? So here we are. Let's see. Um, comfort, eco, no, e drive, no. You know what? Forget everything. We're just gonna pedal down. Oh my goodness. Woo! Ha. Huh. This isn't the best location for this. Hmm. Maybe I need to go elsewhere. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so getting this vehicle out on the road, it is very much a sports car because I know a three cylinder engine doesn't exactly say supercar to say the least. It has nearly 400 horsepower, 369 I believe was the power output of this vehicle. And uh, it does a really good job of putting the power down. Now, I have not had a lot of time in BMW products, <laughs> but this one is a fun one. In fact, the most time I've had in a BMW product was in a vehicle with a Toyota badge, and that is the 2022 Toyota Supra. And yes, we drove that earlier this week. Be sure and subscribe and you can see what my wife thought about that car as well but this feels a lot like the inside of that Supra and nothing like it all at the same time. It still has BMW's infotainment system with their joystick and their screen up there. The uh, radio controls feel the same, HVAC controls feel the same, all wrapped in a package that is very much not the same. This is, this is a very interesting vehicle all the way around from, oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, from the looks, the doors, the interior, everything is very bespoke to this car. And much like that Supra, the chassis of this is very well planted. And even on this rough East Texas back road is not beating me to death, but you can tell you're actually planted to the road. This is a surprisingly fun car for a three cylinder. The only other three cylinders I can really think of, Geo Metro, think a few Ford Focuses maybe. None of them are this fun. <laughs> this thing is a rocket <laughs> and will put a smile on your face in a heartbeat. 
and it is because of that hybrid electric drive because it supplements the power with the electricity as opposed to relying on the electricity to really be your sole motivating factor like in that i3 so while these vehicles were both out at around the same time or at the same time and both had gasoline engines and an electric drive this vehicle is much more bmw as far as the ultimate driving machine than that i3 ever could be this thing actually has a completely different focus and, and that's why you're buying it oddly enough i think more people turn their heads to look at that i3 than this i8 because i don't know they're very striking vehicles in their own right but this really fits with that bmw badge a lot more than that i3 did which makes a little more sense this definitely fits the mission and the purpose of bmw more so than that i3 <laughs> yes it is fun it is absolutely fun and it's just so very different and I just want to say a huge thanks to our friends at House of Cars here in Tyler, Texas. They are actually selling both of these BMWs and begged me to come review them for them because he knew I would enjoy them both. He knows my love of electrification and what it can do. And this vehicle really encapsula encapsulates all of that because it has the best of both worlds. It is crazy, weird, supercar styling rear wheel drive fun lots of power instant torque just ah uh, it puts a huge smile on your face and turns heads in the process whereas that i3 has some of the fun quirks and yes dare i say features of an electric vehicle you now it has the one pedal driving with the regen when you let off the gas it puts power back in the batteries all that fun stuff this thing is just a blast to take down a country road just to have some fun in and it is so much fun if you're interested in either i will put the links to their website down below let them know gt garage talk sent you ready oh, oh my goodness it's not as visceral as some other vehicles that i've driven here lately but it is definitely quick and that three cylinder doesn't sound like any three cylinder i would even imagine i i, I don't what <laughs> i've never driven a three cylinder car and for this to be the first it is very unique it, it definitely doesn't sound like a 1.5 liter three cylinder i drive a 1.4 liter four cylinder that doesn't sound as good as this one they definitely have it tuned for fun and sounds good in the process and having all of the noise come from back behind you adds just a little bit of fun to the whole process as well as far as daily livability in this thing i do believe my ingress egress portion of this video explains it all to you but otherwise visibility out of this is not that bad and it's got more than enough power to get you out in traffic and moving down the road that's for certain so not a completely unpractical car but you may join a yoga class if you're planning on buying this one well there you have it gearheads two very different ways to do electrification and hybrid from the very same company at the very same time these are two very interesting vehicles that don't even seem like they belong in the same family whether you are going for the Isetta Urkel kind of look with uh, this i3 and its more efficient powertrain or more for fun sporty performance uh, with an over 30 mpg rating on the i8 you're in good company here with the bmw i team and this really was just the beginning for them as they are rolling out the ix as we speak so two very fun cars showing what the ultimate driving machine would look like if electrified 
If you want to see more from us, be sure and hit that subscribe button down below and ring the bell so you are notified every time we post a new video. Definitely go and find us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, all at GT Garage Talk. You can find our award-winning podcast on your favorite podcast platform or at gtgaragetalk.com. But unfortunately, my time with these two have has ended for the day and I have to give them back. But until next time, gearheads, bye. <clears throat> Seriously? What this thing is like when my suction cup falls off.